The Lives of Saints is the next book on the Grishaverse and I just read it and we're going to talk about it. We'll also talk a bit about the upcoming Netflix show as it is a must to do in any Grisha video. It's a bit hard to review this sort of book. I see this as more of a merch than an actual book. So this book is supposed to be that red book given to Alina by the Apparat in Shadow and Bone. Well, sort of. We'll get to that later, but let's start with the design because I think this would be the main reason to get this. You'd probably get this book as a collectible item if you are a Grisha fan. So it actually comes with this bluish, greenish half jacket with the Netflix sticker printed on. So an important thing, if you want to get any Grishaverse books, do it now. Otherwise all of them will have this soon to be a major Netflix show or now on Netflix or something like that. I think it's obnoxious. I hate those and I hate this. It's not even a sticker that you can remove. It is printed on. If you've been watching this channel for some time, you might know I hate quotes on the front cover. Also, if you have been following the channel for a while and still haven't subscribed, don't forget to do that as 85% of the views come from people who are not subscribed. But getting back to the sticker print, like this is next level. It completely ruins the cover for me. Fortunately, in this case, you can just take the whole jacket off because the actual design is on the hardcover anyway. And it's a beautiful red, but maybe sort of magenta-ish. I don't know how close it shows on the video, but it's not like red, red. Here, I'll show you side by side with Six of Crows Collector's Edition, which is red, but this is kind of not. Here's compared to the split edges. It is still very pretty. It has these gold foil glyphs, which I think mean uh, the lives of saints in Ravkan. This is the language created for the show, by the way. David Peterson, who also created Dothraki and High Valyrian for Game of Thrones, worked on the Netflix adaptation of Shadow and Bone. So this is the result of the language he created for Ravka. And there's also these embroidered frames in the front and back covers. The spine has this symbol, no idea what it means, but overall it's a great design. It has really nice texture. It's super thin. The book is only 120 pages. There are 28 saints featured in this book. Each saint has an illustration to go with them. Here, I'll show you the most important one that you want to see. Sanct Ilya in Chains. This is the illustration they talk the most about in the book. Here you can see the stag, the serpent, the bird, all the amplifiers they're supposed to find. The illustrations are good. They're not like mind-blowing or anything, but I think they fit the theme well. I think they resemble acrylic painting. Not sure if they were painted traditionally or digitally, but I like them. Here are some samples if you are wondering. Here's San Juris, you might remember from King of Scars. Here is Sanct Grigory. I think he was the one where the name Grisha came from. And of course, Sanct Elizabeta of the Roses. The inside pages also have these embroideries on the edges. And the back pages of the paintings are this gold color. Now, the reason why I said this is not exactly the book that Alina had was because, as you see, there's a story for Sancta Alina of the Fold here. And here is one for the Darkling. It says the starless saint. Apparently Alina is the saint of orphans and those with undiscovered gifts. There's also the saint of the book. I don't know what it's supposed to mean. Maybe an author self-insert, not quite sure. The Darkling story is sort of interesting because it involves Yuri, whom you might remember from King of Scars. I'm not going to say more, but that is one story that directly references both Shadow and Bone and King of Scars. The stories are generally okay. They're not great. Most are shorter, like a couple of pages. Some are four or five pages long. Now the general theme of these stories is that the saints were Grisha, and in the past, people were scared of Grisha magic and thought they were dark magic. But these stories are praising those people with Grisha powers and telling cautionary tales about those people who harmed the Grisha when the saints were trying to help them. Most stories end with the saint Grisha getting killed in some way. Not all of them, but most of them. The interesting thing about these stories is I think that the stories sort of hint at some Grisha powers we haven't seen explored quite as much yet. For example, there's a saint who uses Material Kai Small Science. I'm not sure how these are pronounced by the way. I think the audiobook says Material Kai as in Latin. 
but I feel like Material Key feels more Russian inspired. I'm guessing the show will have the final say on how this language works, as there are some other quirks with Robcon. I'm sure David Peterson has solved all of those, and we can know for sure then. But anyway, this Material Nick Saint creates sort of an automaton army of metal soldiers, and then I think another Material Nick Saint, Black Cement, forges a super powerful sword, and only that sword is able to destroy these automatons. I use the word automaton for mechanical robots if that makes any sense. And apparently the sword still exists at Shuhan. That was really interesting because in the series, the material Nick are usually kind of weaker. They are kind of the nerds. But in this book, I saw a lot of potential for material Kai magic. And honestly, I want a material Nick villain. I think that would be so cool. There's infinite potential in material Kai magic. And honestly, after reading this book, I decided to identify as a material Nick. It's so silly that they are the lowest order Heart renders are just so overpowered. There really needs to be a power balancing in the Grishaverse. So I hope Lee Bardugo explores some powerful material Kai abilities in the next book. There's also sort of blood magic. That was interesting. I haven't seen that before. But other than that, there are lots of tide makers and squalors. Sanct Grigory is obviously a healer. And it was fun for me to sort of read these stories and deduce their powers because the stories don't exclusively tell you they're using the small science, right? They're just telling the stories as myths. But since you know the Grisha powers, you can deduce what powers the saints were actually using. There's one story I'm not sure if the saint is using powers from two different orders. It feels like she's using material Kai abilities to saw incredible stuff, but also she uses them to make like a cape and then fly from a tower, which I think is a summoner ability. So the crossovers have been happening even in the myths, which tells me we will see more crossover powers in Rule of Wolves. Overall, I think this is a fun little collectible book. Don't get this in ebook or anything, only get this physical version. It's not worth getting in any other format. As I said, the stories are just too basic and not super interesting. Apparently, Lee Bardugo wrote a lot of this book while she was on the set for the show. How cool is that? I think if you are a fan of the books, this is a fun little collectible to have. It is kind of expensive, but it's really well designed. I am quite happy to have it. I would love to know your thoughts about this in the comments. This channel has tons of Grisha content, so don't forget to check those playlists out. Especially once the show comes out, I'll deep dive into every episode and compare to the books. So if you don't want to miss that, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. I am